Hey, you guys, thanks for joining me again for a live at 5 30 tonight. So, I wanted to push it off a little bit so that we could come out and see this new uh, acreage property going live tomorrow morning. So, first, Sam, grab a quick little look. We'll go inside in a minute. Go so ahead and back around this way. And I'll talk about this property and a couple of things in real estate as we walk along here. Actually, you go ahead of me. Can you go that way and I'll walk should, like this? Should, should I keep looking at you? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, we're trying to figure this out. So, a couple things. This is two and a half acres. You know what? I might just need to hold it myself. Sorry. Because I can't. No, no. Hold it for me. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. with the live. We haven't done this while we're walking backwards before. But, um. This is two and a half acres out in Hawkinson. Great home. I think it's around 2,400 square feet. I really want to show you the backyard here for a minute. Come back here. Because the front, you saw that the front had pasture area on the other side. And then, then uh, some flat land. And then back here, you've got a whole different kind of environment. Look at this. You've got these wonderful beds back here that are already pre-done. Ready for you guys to do. You've got a little area, like a picnic area over there in the woods. And back there, we're not going to go back way back there, but there's a, uh, a year-round creek back there that is wonderful. So this is the two and a half acres Hawkinson School District out on flat land, easy to get to, uh, for $4.99. So this is a really awesome home. This week, we have had so much activity. We have seven homes closing this week. I think four of them are tomorrow. And we had a couple more that we put on the market that already got offers on them. Um, one was, I think you guys saw the 10 acre parcel with two homes at a studio. We put it on for $7.50. We got multiple offers. So we have an over full price asking offer as well as an over full price backup offer. So it is just a great time to sell. Uh, this is such a wonderful porch. Wouldn't you just love to sit out here? The family doesn't stay, <laughs> but they've loved the land. So let's go inside for a moment. Okay. So come on in. There's, um, this is a really big, uh, all the rooms down here are really big. It kind of just says, welcome home, sit on down and enjoy yourself. You've got this big living room in here. Uh, a really nice dining room that walks out to a deck looking back again at your territorial views of the trees and the creek way back there one situation i want to talk to you guys about last week we mentioned um escrow holdbacks right and we were talking about the importance of when you need an escrow holdback maybe this was two weeks ago and another situation came up where we had someone stay after closing for a couple of days and the, my seller, they're, they're the buyer, obviously. They, the buyer did not ask for an escrow holdback. They didn't ask them to put a little bit of money away so that they could do a final walkthrough right before possession. So not my job to protect the buyer. Um, the seller, who was moving across country, mistakenly, there was just some confusion on what was supposed to stay and what was supposed to go, but they took the fridge, okay? The buyer calls me very upset. And um, because I care about my clients, also this, this family room is really awesome. These windows are triple pane windows all the way to the floor so you can get all the light in here. And then we also have the wood stove. It is a super con a cozy country home. And what I like about this room, I know I'm skipping gears for a moment, but what I like about this room is because you have this door here and there used to be a door there that if you wanted or needed to make this into a bedroom or a private office or something like that, you still have all that other family space out there. So it's a great home. Um, let's just continue to talk about that situation while we walk upstairs for a moment, okay? Big laundry room downstairs. We're not gonna check that out. You can see the pictures online and the bathroom, but let's go upstairs for a minute. Let me turn on the light first so we can talk. All right, so here's what happened. So the refrigerator, right? You move in a few days later, there's no refrigerator. The buyer happens to be, you know, very, very pregnant, very ready to just be like done with this all and very upset at this point and calls me and says, you need to fix this. So the reality is, is I actually don't. Really important to know that once you move into a home and it's closed, the reason you need that escrow hold back, if she had had $2,000 held back, 
in case of any incident, then she could have said, I'm not going to release the $2,000 because I don't have a fridge. I need this to buy a fridge. There's no escrow holdback. So what is her, what's her option? What can she do? You got small claims court is what you really have. That's it. You've got small claims court and this person's out of state. How are you going to drag them back? You're kind of out of luck. So get the escrow hold back if you're going to have somebody stay in your property after closing, which is not uncommon. The In this situation, I'm always going to advocate and work for my client. So even after technically our transaction is finished, I'm still going to step up and say, okay, how can I help you out? They didn't mean to take it. I arranged a fridge. The buyer wanted a much more expensive one, but I got them something else that was comparable. Got it over to, had somebody drive over to Beaverton, bring it out to them in Yakult. Okay, so I'm doing all of this kind of stuff behind the scenes that is really not a part of a real estate agent's job. And it's really important you know who your realtor is because I have called people up and said, hey, this and this happened to my buyer or this and this. And, and the realtor is just like, sorry, not even gonna help you out. Not even gonna try. Now there's a limit where this particular buyer is now saying this and this and this and this and this didn't work and you have to do this. And I'm like, yeah, no, actually I don't. Right, I'm gonna advocate for my client, but you're not actually my client. So you gotta really know what your realtors, how far is your realtor willing to go to go to bat for you, especially after a transaction is closed. Because at that point, there is no, there is no legal relationship there anymore. And that they don't really have a right or a reason to step in and advocate for you. And yet often, this week I've done a couple of things that have happened after closing. I'm working on another situation, helping somebody after closing to get some information from a, um, an inspection that doesn't matter if some things happen, but this is after closing. So there are three situations that have taken my time this week that are technically with previous clients. They're always my clients, so I'm always going to take care of them. But technically, know your realtor because they may not be willing to go that extra mile after something is closed. All right, let's finish this tome tour really fast. Um, this is a great, let's at least just do this. The other are three bedrooms, they're good size, but this is a great uh, master bedroom. Big, big, nice, wonderful welcoming doors, big room. You can see out, it's all private everywhere. Hey, let's look out this way real fast. Just so you can see, they have alpacas. So over here, there are alpacas and a whole pasture. So if you want horses or alpaca or whatever you want, there's the room, there's the pasture land for it. It's awesome out here. I love this area. All right, you guys. So private message me if you want the link before anybody else. Otherwise, it should be up and running sometime tomorrow. See you soon.